With the Department of Labor's announcement last month of a loss of another 131,000 jobs for U.S. workers, caused in large part by the loss of federal census jobs and the continuing inability of the private sector to access credit and hire significantly, the 8 million jobs lost in the recession remains the key issue for working and middle-class Americans. With an unemployment rate stuck at 9.5% and buzz rippling through the media of double-dip recession and the fear of a sweep by right-wing anti-labor candidates, what do union organizers and working folks have to celebrate on Labor Day? And what new strategies are on Labor's agenda? We talk today with Sandy Pope, president of Teamsters Local 809, a veteran in the struggles for workers' rights. Before we talk to Sandy, we're going to hear from Trent McNutt, an unemployed painter. In November of last year, the company that I worked for, for 11 years, went out of business because of the economy. This business was started in 1923 and had an 87-year history in Toledo, Ohio. I went to work for another company, but business has been unsteady. When the contractor has work, I go to work. The contractor doesn't have work, I sit home. My father instilled hard work and volunteerism in me. I watched my dad for countless years support me, provide for me when I played sports. He had a great work ethic and rarely ever missed work. We need to elect the people that support pe uh, guys like my dad and not the super wealthy. Welcome, Sandy. Nice to see you again. Um, you've been working with the Teamsters for how long? You had to ask. I had to um, ask. I've been a member since 1977. Well, you know, the traditional image of a Teamster is an over-the-road truck driver, but uh, I happen to know it's uh, much more diverse. Can you talk a little bit about who is the Teamsters in 2010? Well, I was a truck driver, but um, there are many people all through the transportation industry, pilots, flight attendants, uh, railroad workers, uh, bus drivers, but we represent a lot of people in healthcare, manufacturing, warehousing, uh, food distribution, uh, you name it. Well, you know, Teamsters have a reputation of being a very effective union, uh, a very tough union, in, in fact, and over the years you've gained a lot in terms of standards for workers pensions, uh, health and uh, dental plans. Uh, what's the status of all of those gains that have taken decades for you to attain? Oh, we're fighting on all fronts to keep those, uh, to keep health benefits that are affordable to people to save our pensions. Uh, we're really uh, um, fighting a, a combination of economic disasters that have been going on and just a renewed attack by employers to relieve themselves of any responsibility for uh, people's reti retirement through collective bargaining. Um, and with Social Security under attack as well, we're, you know, we're sounding the alarm even more um, with our members to really protect what they have, especially with pensions, and not to be lured away into uh, 401ks, for example. Uh, I, I know that we've all been engaged in these discussions over the last numbers of years about the rights of workers to organize. And uh, Are you seeing a substantial change between the Bush administration and the current Labor Department? I haven't seen it yet. Um, we're hoping to, to see. Um, we're hoping that um, that EFCA passes, at least in some form, uh, the new the proposals on uh, to protect workers uh, better under, uh, to be able to organize without fear of retaliation and losing their jobs. Right now we're in a, we're involved, my local's involved in a big organizing drive where immigration came in um, and a few years ago and 300 workers lost their jobs. And there's no sign that that may not happen again. They came in the middle of an organizing drive? Yes, a week before Christmas, a week before our vote, and, um, and uh, scared off or uh, the company fired people for lack of documentation. And um, so uh, now we believe that most people have their documents, but it doesn't mean that that's not going to happen elsewhere because Congress doesn't seem to be able to make up their mind as to which, which way they want to go with the immigration issue. Well, there's two things going on right now. And on the one hand, American workers are feeling the pressure. Unemployment's really pushing 10% with the official numbers. There's a tremendous amount of insecurity uh, among working people. And then there's this question of massive amounts of immigrant workers who are in the country. The numbers range anywhere from 8 million to 12 million, depending on who you speak to. Yours is one of the unions that 
kind of meets both of those constituencies. And uh, what's the conversation like inside the union at this point? Um, I think that uh, our members are fairly sophisticated about this issue um, in that they understand that the main, the main issue is will someone um, be willing to stand up and join a union or bargain a contract hard, um, you know, stand up for themselves. And if they are in fear of being deported, that's going to make it impossible um, to do either, uh, organize them or to get a good contract if that's hanging over their heads. So while there may be disagreement as to whether having immigrant workers here is undermining our contracts or not, and um, everyone agrees that the legal status has to be, you know, that there has to be a decision made one way or another because this limbo that we're in just uh, serves to um, give advantages to the, to the companies to be able to use this incredible fear of deportation um, over people's heads. We talk a lot about the companies, we talk about a lot of, of the power that they have, but you know, part of the other uh, experience that workers have in the unions is unions are very complicated organizations. Uh, where does this notion of union democracy uh, fit in in terms of helping workers elevate uh, their standards and protect themselves? Uh, uh, workers should not be potted plants in their own organization. They should be a part of it and uh, it should be a living, breathing organization that um, can change with the times and reflect uh, um, and provide leadership to unorganized workers um, and help. Um, to do that, I think you have to mobilize your entire uh, membership. You can't just have a few people being the leaders to really um, uh, get all the strength you can and the power you can out of an organization. Everyone should be involved. That means they have to be educated, feel ownership of the organization, which means they need to be able to elect their leadership and feel that they could be the leaders instead of having it all top down. So I think that unions that don't uh, take advantage of that and don't have uh, democratic um, uh, structures in their union and encourage elections and things like that are are losing out on a huge amount of resources and um, you know really bright, uh, wonderful, energetic people out there in our ranks, and that's why I think our union um, is is so strong to this day. Labor movement's going to spend 40, 50, 60 million dollars in this upcoming congressional elections. When you put it all together across the country, what are we fighting for here? I keep asking myself that. Um, we're fighting for. Uh, uh, for workers to be recognized, uh, we're fighting for so much. We're fighting for retirement security. We're trying to preserve people's pensions and and the right to uh, uh, live in dignity um, after you know when they retire. Um, and that's seriously threatened right now. And and that I think is one of the most critical issues is to um, reform uh, the laws that are governing our, our pension plans right now and and look at social security uh, without thinking that it's okay to just slash people who are, uh, people's benefits without providing anything else. Um, I think that um, the, the things that, that unions are pushing, it surprises me in some ways that, that the Republicans are against it because t pensions are a way of people to save money for themselves. They're taking part of their paycheck and they're putting it aside in a pension fund so that they themselves can take care of themselves. Traditionally we refer to that as deferred wages. Deferred wages. So why would you be against that? If you're against the government and your taxes providing support for people, which supposedly Republicans are, why would you be against a union person setting aside uh, part of their wages to pay for themselves in retirement? It makes no sense True. to me. Absolutely. Um, and uh, the right to organize means that people are doing something for themselves. They're standing up for themselves. On this Labor Day, I mean, it's a huge part of the national conversation uh, to be continued. Okay. Thank you.